and builds the world's largest toilet paper pyramid. It took 27,000 rolls of toilet paper <laughs> to construct the world's tallest paper pyramid. Why would you waste that much? You know, how, that's a lifetime of toilet paper. That is a lifetime supply unless, you know, you've got some stomach issues. But, yeah, um, again, these Guinness records, they, they amaze me. You, uh, the silliest things you never think of, the biggest toilet paper, what was it, pyramid? Uh, yeah, that is that is amazing. But think of the time and the effort these people put into doing that. Boy, if they channel that energy for some something a little more positive, they could really be some movers and chasers, ch- shakers out there. I don't know. Burger King fans are really frustrated over the stupid new plant-based burger <laughs> that Burger King can't keep up, uh, you know, just putting them out because everybody's buying them. Oh, boy. You, I, I still say, listen, cows have been for a millennia been making the best burgers taste like meat. So why change? Why, why use plants to taste like meat when cows have been doing it perfectly all along? Oh, boy. And, and it's not good for you. Anytime you use chemicals or a process to make something that's fake or it tastes like something else, you, it's just it can't be healthy. I wonder, I'm not going to say Burger King, but some of these other companies, I wonder if they put any meat extract or something in it to give it the flavor, you know, to make it taste real. I know there's a chain on their french fries that they use a meat extract in their french fries when they, you know, process the fries. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. That that whole word process, that that's just gives me chills because whatever happened to just food, quit messing with the food, leave the food alone, don't try to make fake food, just leave food as food. <laughs> Dang it. I don't like eating processed food. I mean, seriously. Me either. Well, that makes Mm-mm. two of us. <laughs> Probably a lot more people out there, too. Now, do you have one or two stories before I get back into the, you know, the wacky, crazy, you know, news? Oh, I got all kinds of stories. What, what, what kind do you want to hear tonight? Well, since we've got a guest on UFOs, well, how about something on UFOs? Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, yeah, there's, um, oh, where'd it go? Oh, here's one on UFOs. Um, a former, the former astronaut from the UK. And oh, her you, name oh, is. Oh, you just stole that one from me. That was my next thing. I'll go ahead. Oh, what? Oh, go ahead. You no, can, you can, you can go ahead. Just, why not? I'll just go to something else. <laughs> I didn't know you was going to. Anyway, her name's Dr. Helen Sharman. And she was Brit- Britain's first ever astronaut. And she is certain that we are not alone in the universe. And she goes on to say, it's possible that they're right here right now, and we simply can't see them. And she thinks that aliens do exist, and there are so many billions of stars out there that the universe, that there must be some all sorts of forms of life everywhere out there. I kind of agree with her, you know, on that. I've said that before on here. Matter of fact, I think I said it just a few days ago, <laughs> to be honest with you. But, and, um... <clears throat> Also, there's oh, I had another one here. Where'd it go? Let's see. Oh, cryptid. How about cryptids? Oh, go here's ahead. one on. A, yeah, here's one on uh, cryptid. Now, this woman, this is a woman's Bigfoot sighting. Let's see. She was fishing along the river, her and her friend, and they were up a rock wall. It was about eight foot, eight feet high above the river. We had been fishing there for about two hours, and when we saw a herd of deer cross the river away from us, about five. Minutes later, we could see something moving around in the woods directly across from where we were sitting. And the river is part of the reservation. It's an Indian reservation. And we just figured it was a deer and continued to fish. Then we realized that it was not a deer. It was something that stood up on its hind legs. It looked as though it was trying to eat leaves off the trees. Now, the sunset caught its eyes And I realized it was looking forward at us with these glowing reddish-orange eyes, glowing from the sunlight. And I'm not implying it it was possessed or scary demon eyes or anything like that. But as I was trying to figure out what this deer was doing, I realized it was staring at us from the woods. and And this is when me and my friend and I realized it was not a deer at all. 
a large black image that was standing on two legs, staring right at us across from the river. So kind of like similar to the sighting you had across from a ways there, and you realize it wasn't a bear or a deer or anything, and then uh, it kind of sent chills up their spine. I guess it would. <laughs> yeah, I guess it would, too. My goodness. I couldn't imagine coming across something like that. Oh, also, there was oh, a uh, huge bright UFO over St. Augustine, Florida, just recently that was reported, and that was on January 3rd. And let's see. Here it goes. Here, here's what the witness says. The And there, there is actually a video of it, too. Uh, attached video showing at their time. Pictures. Let's see. In addition to the pictures and the video of the or- orange, orangish reddish light that appeared during the same two weeks nightly in the southwest sky at about 45 degree angle and hovered, then moved after about an hour or after dark, and it moved west across the sky night- nightly until we couldn't see it. My husband, who has a- who actually recorded this video on this phone, had an experience about 20 minutes after this recording that he still won't share with me, and I don't know if he was if he has any video or picture evidence, and I still don't know what happened other than it really freaked him out. So that kind of almost sounds like he might have been abducted or had missing time, and he's really freaked out. What do you think? I don't know what to think. After some of the guests we've had lately, I, it, it, he could have been abducted. Then again, lost time. It, it could be some other reason for it, but you never know. You know, there's a, no. big, a group of people out there who said there is no UFOs at all. That is just a figment of somebody's imagination that started this whole thing about UFOs. I don't believe that one. Well, you I know, can say this. <laughs> if that's the case, then that's called mass hysteria, and I don't even believe, think that's possible, is it? I don't know. Can you imagine you're waiting for an airplane flight? You're sitting in the lobby. And you see some guy just openly unzip his pants and th- just take a whiz right from the chair. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Well, this is according <laughs> to the mirror. I mean, would they lie? No, they wouldn't lie. And, and I, I don't even know. If I seen something like that, I, I definitely know that I would not eat in that restaurant. And, of course, then again, maybe it's the guy that had a prior experience with a python in the restroom, so he's afraid to go use the restroom. Yeah, so he just used the chair there in the lobby with a couple hundred people waiting to catch a flight. I don't know. A guy gets even with his wife. His wife was having an affair on him. He kept quiet. He takes his wife to a nice desert beach, tropical beach, and he gives her this real sexy bathing suit. Well, the material disintegrates as soon as it hits water. His <laughs> wife kind of walks out into the water. And she's enjoying the warm waves crashing. And she's not bad looking to boot. Now, there's literally hundreds of people on the beach. Guess what? She realizes something is wrong. <laughs> and then starts screaming, give me a towel, get me a towel. And he goes, no. And she no. goes, I can't stay in the water. And he goes, the hell, you should have thought about that when you had that affair on me. And he left. <laughs> he had a little revenge plot. Boy, you put a lot of time and effort into this one, I'll tell you. Yeah. You went and got a disintegratable bathing suit and everything. Probably went to a crowded beach. but That's right. Uh, and, and on a tropical beach and a desert beach, a nice hot desert tropical beach and she went out there and with a nice bathing suit and had to come out with nothing I, some women that wouldn't even bother though i got news for you but um yeah that would be a shock if you're going in the ocean next thing you know your bathing suit just kind of melts in the water that would kind of get, send a shock to your system for sure well i don't know it kind of scares me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would scare you. I'd scare anybody. Especially, it depends on, I uh, guess, what the wife looked like, I reckon. Hell, it could be really <laughs> scary more ways than one. <laughs> yeah. But I guess it's a good way, you know, to get back at your spouse. <laughs> That's hey, a heck of a way to get back at your spouse. Yeah. I don't know. It's speaking, 
Hey, speaking of craziness, there was a woman who admitted to passing off her dog's urine as her own for a drug test. Yeah, well, that didn't pass very long, did it? I, as soon as they, they checked the urine, they knew it was non-human. I mean, what do these people think? Could you imagine if they'd come back and said, ma'am, you're going to have puppies. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Oh, ma'am, you got uh, rabies. <laughs> You got rabies and you're having puppies. You need to see a physician or a veterinarian right away. Yeah, you need to see a vet. Uh, well, a woman, well, something went wrong. She got really upset. She got herself arrested. And then she really realized now she's in jail. But when they went to release her, she didn't want to go because she thought it was like being in a, well, what, what can I say? She enjoyed it. She didn't want to go home. She she, she didn't want to go jail. Home. Probably had better food and sleep there. <laughs> I don't good. know. I saw a TV show one time on the History Channel, and they were showing about young kids, you know, juveniles end up in you know in, in juvenile detention, and some of the food they had was fine. Then they showed uh, a jail where adult prisoners were, and they had this stuff that kind of like looked like loaf. It, you know, it, it, it maybe had a little bit like meatloaf, but it was a hard like loaf. And they had a, they were fed a slice of, of it for breakfast, lunch and dinner. And the jailer, you know, said, hey, it has all the nutrition you need to survive. <laughs> if you can stop it, get and get it down. That's a good way to lose weight. But uh, you know what that sounds like? Processed food. All over again. Yeah, it sounds like what they probably did is throw everything they had in there and make this horrible, you know, whatever concoction. Because you know what they said? They don't have to give you good food. They just have to give you food where you can survive on. Yeah, all they got to do, as long as they meet the certain levels of codes, and that doesn't mean it's got to, believe me, that does, that's not good. As long as they meet the certain codes... Hey, like you say, they can mix it all in one thing and and make some mold like little look like a hockey puck, and and it's got all your nutri- daily nutrition in it, and that's all they got to do. I know it's, it's scary. Of course, I've never been in jail yet. I'm knock on wood, I never do. But I can tell you one thing: I, I if I, you know, you're supposed to be innocent till you're found guilty, right? Not in this country. <laughs> no, if you are actually innocent till you're proven guilty, then why do you have to eat prison food? Why can't you just order, you know, McDonald's and have it, you know, catered into you? <laughs> if you can you afford mean? it, why not? I mean, if you're not guilty yet, to you're pronounced guilty, you're actually innocent. So why do you have to eat that stuff? I, listen, I'm not arguing with you. I agree with you, but they kind of want to make it hard for you. They want to make it miserable for you when you're in there. I, I, you know, another trick they like to do when you get in there especially these little jails that they hold you overnight in or something. They like to turn the heat up to like 120 degrees and and burn you up or freeze you out either one. I don't know that. I never (laughs) found that out. You know, I've seen where they actually have taken people and put them on chairs and then got the fire hose going. Uh, Yeah, and I'll tell you another thing. If you ever get put in a jail in a big town with a million people where the phone book is about, you know, four inches thick, they will put you in a chair and work you over the phone book a few times, too. I'm just saying. Oh, guess what? It's time for a break. We'll be back in three minutes. Uh, And the top of the hour, who do we have on our show? We have Rob Shelsky, and we're going to be talking UFOs and the dangers of them. Yeah, so everybody stay tuned tonight. You're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. After dark. Hey. 